Welcome back to Transformation Ground Control. I am so excited for our next guest. We have Brian Potts, who's our Chief Client Officer and Managing Partner of Third Stage, as well as Allison Hopkins, who is a Managing Consultant with Third Stage. And they both have beautiful families, but they're also juggling and um, absolutely crushing it at building their careers as well. So I'm excited to have both Brian and Allison here to talk to me about what it's like to be a working parent Welcome, Brian and Allison. Hello again. Hello again. So, Brian, you're the chief client officer and managing partner at Third Stage. Allison, you're a managing consultant. You guys both have beautiful families. Brian, I know you have one on the way. So this conversation is very much geared toward the working parents of the world, right? It's it's a juggling act, to say the least, in some cases, and in some cases more so depending on their age. Um, and it's always been that way, but even more so within the past year when we have had changes in childcare, had changes in how the school system operates, you know, I think parents are feeling it more than ever before. And, you know, even taking a step back before the pandemic, we're living in a day and age where, you know, the cost of living, depending on where you live, is so high that both parents are in the workforce now more than ever before. So really working parents make up a huge component of the of the labor force in general. So I think this conversation is conducive to a lot of people. And I think your perspective is very interesting because both of you have managed to find great success in your careers while still also building and growing your family. So I want to hear about your guys' experience. Um, so let's just start from the top. Tell me about your family. Brian, I'll start with you. How many kids do you have? How old are they? Tell us a little bit about your family. So I've got a four-year-old daughter who just turned four and a, a boy on the way. One of each. That's exciting. Congratulations. Thank you. And Allison, what about you? Yeah, so I have um, four kids and their ages are 11, um, six, four, and almost two. And uh, my oldest is a girl and the three younger ones are boys. So, um, and we are done. So congratulations, Brian, that baby stage is fun, but I am done. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot. You got your hands full, Allison. <laughs> and I've, you're you're going to be able to provide a lot of light to both Brian and I because I have a two and a half year old and we have one on the way. So as they Congrats. get thank you as they get older, I'm like, you know, it's always a new challenge as they grow up and, you know, hit that next year. It's something. Yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yep. And Brian, you can you can probably attest to this. I mean, when your kids are below one. They sleep a lot. They're easy to entertain so you can get more work done, right? And then when they become toddlers, if you don't have childcare, things can get out of control very quickly, right? Forget the terrible twos. The threes are It's so challenge. true. Yeah, I feel like my little guy's coming up on terrible threes too. Yeah, I know. I mean, I've had times where I'm on calls and all of a sudden the wall is covered in markers and the flower like how did he get to the flower? You know, it's all thrown across the room. Yes, speaking from experience. So that's its own challenge. And then as you get into the preteens or teenage years, it becomes almost like a psychology play of like 100%. how do you raise good humans, you know? So- 100%, yeah. Go. Make, make them human. Make them human, right? So Allison, you said you have an 11 year old, you have a six year old, a four year old and a two year old, right? That's right. So tell me a little bit about your juggle. Like, what does it look like balancing work and your family? Yeah. So I think the pandemic has been a little bit of a blessing and a curse. So there's no travel, um, which is great. And also no time for mom to like, just get a breather to be by myself. Um, but the way that we juggle our schedule is, you know, I just try to set like family hours and I try to set work hours. And I think more than ever, it's been important for me to just respect my family schedule. And so my kids, um, 
they're back in school and they are out of the house. I get all four of them out of the house by eight and back home um, with coffee in hand by 8.30. <laughs> and my it takes both my husband and I to like, get everybody where they need to be. And then we can do what we need to do, which is get to work. And um, so we have that schedule Monday through Friday. Um, on Wednesdays, my kids, um, so my two older ones go to the same school and the two younger ones are at different schools. So I have three schools that we're managing. So we just make sure that we can get them to their schools in the morning. And then in the afternoon, um, the kids get home around 2.30. And at that point in time, I have to have like a little break in my day to make sure that I can find out how their day is and what's going on in their life and make sure that they're set up with whatever they're going to do, whether it's some homework or play with friends. And then I can get jump back in until um, call it 5, 5.30, and then it's family time again, right? And so it's just a lot of effort to coordinate schedules and make sure that like, you know, there's prepping on the weekends to like have food available for everybody and meals and things of that nature. And so um, I think that just navigating um, really being like and sticking to your schedule like you have to make sure that you plan everything i like i've never been so mindful of my family schedule until this past you know 18 months so right if and you don't have a plan it gets really chaotic <laughs> i can only imagine i've heard someone wise told me whatever your calendar looks like whatever you block out on your calendar is what sh what is important to you right so it's literally managing your time and blocking out that time for the things that absolutely that matter yeah and being and like feeling okay to just say like this isn't going to work for me and i know that um in consulting a lot of times we are on our client schedules and so it's just really important for me to be up front with my clients that look you know i'm going to do everything that i can to like fit around your schedule sometimes i'm not going to be able to make that work though and um, I think that just lets them get to know me as a person and know that I have other things that are really important. And um, it makes me more human when they actually can't see me in person. I think that that's like one thing that as I introduce myself that like makes me more human um, is just letting them know that I have a family and that's important to me. Right. And oftentimes on the other end, they're in the exact same boat, right? Exactly. So it's right. Like you can create that connection that is kind of outside of the books, I guess. True. I guess. So um, I think a lot of what you're saying too, it, it plays into the employer because there's some employers that are very badge in, badge out, work, work the nine to five. You don't have the option of taking a second when the kids get home or doing drop off a little bit later. Um, and I feel like that's where it gets sticky for working parents. You know, if you don't have that ambiguity, I guess, and that leniency, that's when things can get challenging. So it's exciting to hear that you found that with third stage. So Brian, I'll, I'll pass it to you since you're, you know, you're kind of leading the ship with third stage. Um, tell me from your angle, I'll start, I'll kind of backtrack a little bit. Tell me a little bit about your juggle. I mean, you have a four-year-old, you have another one coming on the way. Um, you're, you have a lot of responsibilities on your plate. Tell me what your, your, day-to-day um, -day looks like as you balance both? Yeah, well, I think you, what we're getting into before is, is a key in that there, there's pros and cons to everything. One of the, I think, blessings that we have in the consulting tech world is that our days don't, they don't lock in at nine, they don't end at five. Um, there are a lot of people who have to, different types of navigations. I think most of us in the IT world have a and we can work whenever we work. Um, a lot of times it's 24-7. And I think using that to our advantage, like Allison said, you have to block off time that you have to block off. <clears throat> if you don't do that, you're risking your family, <clears throat> and that's not an option for people. So what I've found valuable is, <clears throat> excuse me, take the time that's needed when it's needed, but don't, don't try and limit the day. Um, <clears throat> obviously, sleep is important, but I found my mo most valuable hours after bedtime, which we target... 8 8 30 it's getting later and later but you know that 8 to 11 time frame at night is, is actually when i get a majority of my office work done now there's the client facing stuff that allison was referring to you you've got to make very clear um when you're available and and stick to those um the the other end of that is you've got to let your family know um you know as kids get into the three four they start to understand that 
you know, in my case, dad needs to work for a reason. I tell her so she can eat. Um, she appreciates that. <clears throat> but when you when you set that rigidity, kids kids do learn, and I think that starts at an early age. So you need their help and your family's help to adhere to those schedules. When when dad shuts his door, <clears throat> she knows that she's not going to go in and you know bug me and try and sit on my lap and do all that kind of stuff. I do think corporate America in general is relaxing a little bit and it's now okay to talk about kids and family. Whereas, you know, a decade ago, it, it, in, there's still a number of organizations that are, I think, struggling with this, the rigidity, the, the firmness on, on work. But I think more and more people are open to discussing more personal lives. I think that's a, a helpful thing for navigating the, the home life work relationship. Right. I couldn't agree more. So tell me a little bit about, you know, for you, you said your daughter has gotten the hang of, you know, knowing when dad is working, right? My son, I got to say, we're still working on that. <laughs> He'll run in in the middle of a conference call and it's brutal. But um, other than that, I mean, as far as the time in your day, do you, do you do what Allison was saying is kind of block it off and, you know, say this is family time, this is... You know, yeah. For work. I, now I, I I do it on a day to day basis because every family is a little bit different. We don't have that much rigidity in our house. So, when, but when I set time aside, I'm going to set time aside. It's sometimes the day of when I know when I'm going to have dinner. But when we determine what that time is, is absolutely. Um, and it, it 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 does take a little bit of dependence on the family. And you know, I'm fortunate that I have a door to shut when I work. But you know, a lot of cases, you know, people working in multiple family households and you know apartment situations don't you know a lot of times you you're in a living room working so how do you I think the training of the kids early on is very important the, the idea of quiet time um, you know we're not huge fans of TV but there's some very big value to you know whether it's the Wiggles or Daniel or whatever the case may be for you know 30 60 minutes well uh, you're on a call because sometimes you know, spouse is out and you've got to still take care of the young one, in Allison's case, many of them. Um, and there, you know, you've just got to find a way to make that work. Yeah. And I, I liked what you were saying, because it, it is true. It depends on the cut of the cloth, if you will, of what the company is. If you're in corporate America and you serve your clients specifically in America, working that nine to five is kind of a must, right? So having uh, your employees deviate from that can be a little bit more challenging. Whereas when you're in the consulting world, it's a little bit more seamless, especially when you have international clients. And if you're working from eight to 11, you're actually working on your client's time. So it's interesting to see, you know, the type of business and how that plays into um, the needs of a working parent too. So tell me a little bit about Allison. I'll come back to you. What has been the most challenging aspect of being a parent and working at the same time? Yeah, so I, um, prior to third stage, I um, led the product uh, management um, sector for Infor Retail. And um, I think, you know, a big determination for me to come in onto this consulting side was to have a little bit more ownership of my calendar. So when working for a corporation that was a global corporation team, my team was all over the world. My clients were all over the world. And at the drop of a hat, having to be on a flight the next day to New York from Minneapolis, it was just really hard on my family life. And so, um, you know, I know that it's um, one of the things that comes with like, uh, with working for corporate, you know, a, a corporate job is that you have to kind of, you know, follow the schedule of your clients, of your, of your leaders. And, um, it was hard on me to, to have to be able to do that and leave my family behind. Um, I'm a mother and a wife, I'm a wife and a mother first and, um, and they came first. And so I just, I had to find something that was going to fit, um, my lifestyle for now. And that's not to say forever. That's just saying for now, I still can learn and grow and um, help people um, and help other companies by applying my knowledge. And so I just had to finally just say like, what are my priorities and, and then follow that. And that's kind of what led me to, um, to, to coming to third stage. And really it was the fact that I can't, I have to be on my own schedule for now. And this is, this is the life that is important for now. 
And um, I, one person told me like, you can't have it all at the same time. And um, while I thought, you know what, I do have it all. And I do have it all at the same time because I've chose a different way to get what I need out of my career. And third stage allows me to do that. So I don't know. I don't know if that answers your question, but really it was just that I, it was before coming to third stage, it was the hardest time of my life trying to, to do everything. And, um, and while I thought I was giving something up because I had a big fancy title and a big fancy team, I didn't actually, because I was more fulfilled doing what I love to do. Right. I love that so much. Cause I had a similar experience where, you know, it's, you said it best. It's what fits your lifestyle and where you are in your life. If, if the place that you're working at doesn't, you know, fit like a puzzle piece into your life, then you can change it. And I feel like for me, in my experience, I was hesitant to change it because things were good, right? Like, why would you change it? Everything's going so great. But are you getting the most out of both situations, your career and your family, or is one giving a little bit more um, than it needs to be? So I think one big takeaway off of what you just said is, if you're not in a situation where it is conducive to you being a good parent or being a good employee, then change it. I mean, it's, it's up to you and where you take your life is up to you. And um, ultimately being happier and being more fulfilled is a little bit more rewarding than those titles and um, you know, situations like that. I don't know, Brian, what do you think? I, I love that explanation <clears throat> and you know, great to be working with you with you both in that regards um i think it, it, that absolutely comes down to it is is make it work for you and what i found you know you, you know, I, I, i'm just a little bit older than call it a lot of parents um but there's a there's a significant shift as, as we all know when you become a parent as to what is priority in your life before it was my career you know i had a wife and all that but she can work her way around but as soon as you have that kid the responsibility shift you know, career does drop to second. It has to, and that's our, our responsibility as parents. So make with that understanding and then making it work around that, I think that's the, the best approach. Yeah, I agree. And this reminds me, I worked really closely with an executive at a Fortune 200 company a few years back. And he his experience was so interesting because he had been at this company for 20 plus years, was there taking it from zero to a thousand. Um, and once they were at a thousand, he looked back and realized his kids were 21, um, and he missed it and he prioritized the wrong things. And that was his biggest regret. And if he could go back, he'd adjust it. So I think it's, it's exactly what you said, Brian, it's understanding where you are, um, when you are there and valuing the things that matter most, because you only get one chance at it. Right. Yeah. And I pre I love Allison's comment that you can have it all. Um, if you just have the flexibility and the understand that it's a, a great big world and there's the flexibility is increasing. I mean, regardless of COVID, we, we've, we've got a lot of choices, a lot of different directions that we can head. So make it work. I agree. A hundred percent. Well, let's take a quick break. Um, and when we come back, I want to take you up on that note on flexibility and talk a little bit about what COVID has done to the workforce. Um, so stay tuned and we'll be right back on Transformation Ground Control. If you are aiming for transformation success, turn to Third Stage Consulting Group. Third Stage's independent and technology agnostic consulting team helps clients define their digital strategies, define their roadmaps, and manage their transformations. With offices in the US, Europe, and Australia, our team helps the world's most forward-thinking organizations through their transformation pitfalls and risks. If you are embarking on a digital transformation or business change initiative, contact Third Stage Consulting to see how we can help you reach the third stage of transformation success. Learn more about us and download independent reports, videos and other best practices at thirdstageconsulting.com. Welcome back to Transformation Ground Control. I am here with 
Brian and Allison from Third Stage Consulting chatting about working parents and what that journey looks like. Now, 2020 has definitely shifted the workforce in general. It's pushed people to work remotely. It's pushed parents to manage both working from home and helping their kids do virtual school. Um, there's been a lot of challenges and um, a couple stats here, 52% of employed parents um, say it's been difficult to handle childcare responsibilities during the pandemic. And then if you also stand that up next to a stat of 46% of employed parents have both the mother and father in the workforce. So when both parents are working, it's hard to figure out how to handle childcare when everything is kind of slipped out from under you. So I think the biggest thing is flexibility, right? I think 2020 has forced all employers to show some uh, leniency, I guess, in what time work is getting completed. Um, base it more off of production rather than how many hours you're sitting in the chair at the office, right? So um, looking at specifically with the pandemic, I mean, we're on the tail end of it, hopefully, right? We can all cross our fingers for that. But looking at what managers and leaders and organizations are doing, how can they help alleviate these challenges that parents are facing given the current climate of, you know, still helping their kids learn remotely or, um, you know, not sending their kids to daycare as they once did. Brian, I'll start with you. What would be your word to the wise for these organizations during this time period? Yeah, it, it, <laughs> that's a pretty big question. There's a lot of factors. It's nice to say just open up flexibility, be more reasonable, but a lot of organizations, including Third Stage, we we service other companies. And if you tell it, you can't tell your your clients just to expand there it becomes confusing so it's a matter of of understanding i think prioritization is is the key um you know if if you need client time during call it those nine to five hours with some some navigation around the, the child stuff you know have you know open up that calendar to maybe morning and evening internal meetings if, if that's an option for people i think a lot of times leadership historically has been sitting at nine to five saying you'll make things work for me i think as leaders we need to understand that the world's changing we need to bend our backs a little bit more too uh and and work with the world that's around us because we can't force everything uh, that's you know trying to punch through a brick wall is not going to work so i think we need to have that flexibility um uh, uh, allowing flexible work uh, time and vacations things like you know that's a, a growing one is the you know the the open vacation policy and and we're adopting that too where you don't you don't necessarily limit people and force them to take time off at the end of the year because that also constrains your ability to service clients so the flexibility comes in a number number of ranges you know hours days weeks um, when you're requiring people to to check in or clock in now if you're running a retail outlet um, and, and that's allison's background that's a little bit different you need people at certain times but then there's there's flexibility such as overlap hours where you can you can have you know multiple layers of people leave early come late and you know lunchtime at, at, at the restaurants you know you you, you staff up so there, there's any number of ways to work around this change and change environment that we've got as well as the you know kids at home and hopefully getting back to school soon hopefully right <laughs> Allison what do you think you know, I think recognizing, I think flexibility is key, but recognizing that because your employees are working more around the clock, you might actually be getting more from them without being in person. And so um, the recognition of that goes so far with the workforce and letting them know, like, we are still achieving great things in the, if that's, if that is in fact the case and find things that they are achieving. You know, I think that a lot of working parents feel like they're doing so much and they're still trying to um, produce at a high caliber for their employer while they're trying, they're, they are producing higher for their family. And so that recognition, um, if at any time is crucial and important at this time, because people are just working so much harder. And so um, in a time of, you know, the world transforming, the workplace transforming, um, people are trying to figure things out and it's created a lot of uncertainty. And so um, 
if employers can not only be flexible, but you know, have some touch points, like regular touch points with their teams to just say thank you or to give updates and say thank you. You know, um, it goes so far. And um, I think that um, on teams that I see performing really, really high um, and some of my clients that are just beating um, and exceeding records in this really hard time frame, they're doing it remotely and they get together every month and they say thank you and they celebrate together. And so um, in a world where a lot of that's not happening, they find really cool and creative ways to do that. So I would encourage more people to find those times, not just focus on work, but actually focus on um, the accomplishments and the people. Um, and I think that would that that really could help your culture and engagement in these times. Yeah, I completely agree. It's reinforcing what's working, right? I think I think there's also been some employers who are hesitant to go remote until they were forced to, and now they're seeing that production continues as it was, or in some cases gets better because, I mean, to your point, it, the cutoff time isn't there anymore. You're at home, right? It cuts the commute time. It cuts, um, you know, the different distractions that would be there if you were driving into the office. Um, rather than closing your computer at five o'clock every day, you're going until dinner time until you finish a project, right? So it's, <clears throat> excuse me, it's it's just kind of that shift in perspective and acknowledging that with with from a leadership standpoint is something that can keep that keep that running. I absolutely agree. So I mean, beyond the pandemic, you know, again, I keep saying, I think we're almost out of it. I really do. But beyond this, I mean, I believe that the remote, the remote workforce aspect is probably going to stick. I think that there's going to be teams that stay remote um, or go into a hybrid model, right? Um, with that, when you look beyond just COVID, um, if you compare people who don't have kids, who don't have the commitments of going to pick up their kid from soccer or drop off at daycare, they can stay there until 9 p.m., no problem. Um, when you look at those two scenarios, what would you say to the working parent who is trying to compete for that promotion with someone who doesn't have those obligations? Brian, I'll start with you. Yeah, well... I, I don't think making a big deal about it is where they say, oh, I'm a parent, I got to do, you know, that that's that's your job. What what employees are looking for is your ability to handle a need, per, period. Uh, I don't think this is a time when you're when you're trying to reach a job is to bring it. Oh, I'm a parent. I need to take this time. This, you know, employers understand that and they they're obligated to work around that. So I wouldn't make a big deal of that. Um, the other consideration is that, you know, look, look at Allison's case and juggling four kids and a, a very strong career, I think parents in some ways are more capable uh, than a lot of pe people who are winging it on their own. Not to say that that's always the case, but there's a responsibility that comes with parenthood that you, sometimes you don't get until you're a parent. And I think if you're able to translate what you learn as a parent into the workplace, you're bringing an extra value. Absolutely. I mean, it's leadership, right? You're leading your kids. You're setting the examples, it's, it's arguably the biggest challenge is being a parent. <laughs> you learn a lot, right? And you bring that into the workforce for sure. So I, I want to wrap it up with this. Allison, you have four kids ranging from 11 to two. Um, what would you say to new parents that want to continue growing their career, um, but are expecting or have young ones and are planning on having more um, and want to have it all? What would you tell them? Well, I don't know. I mean, I think it kind of building on what type of um, Brian said that, you know, you you have this new ability to, to lead and to manage and to, um, you know, share what you your own knowledge with not only your family, but that translates into the working world as well. And so I think that um, you get a new skill set as a parent and um, at times you might think that, you know, it's taking time away from one, one of your worlds or the other, but really they're adding because if you think about the workforce, you know, as, um, as a single individual or like a 
parent, I guess not necessarily single, but like, you know, not as a parent, you know what that world was like. And now you know what this new world is going to be like. And you can understand and relate and empathize with people in a whole new way because you're going to have the same experience. And if you're working your way through your career, the biggest tr like character trait I think that helps people succeed is if you can empathize and you can put yourself in that situation and you can understand what people are up against. And so you may be able to set more realistic timelines. You may be able to understand the trade-offs that people are going through. And so as a leader um, and as a parent, um, I think you have these new skills as you become a first-time parent and a second-time parent and a, a, a parent of multiples. Your skill sets continue to grow and you have the ability to just understand um, people in their situations. Now on the flip side, if you are a single person and you're not a parent and you're working through your, um, your career, you have to build those skill sets somehow, right? <laughs> so they have to be able to relate to other people, put themselves in situations. And so um, they're, they're gonna get it through another avenue. So, uh, you know, leadership is one of those things that you continually have to work on and it has to evolve and it has to evolve with your organization and with the changing times and the world. And so um, I do think that that's a perk that people don't see um, when they have children is that they're, they're gaining these new powers and skills and, um, and don't see, don't, don't let your mind trick you into the fact that that's going to take away from your career. Like, don't trick yourself that way because it's actually, I believe, it works in the other direction. I completely agree. Awesome. Great, great insights, you guys. I appreciate you both jumping on, Allison and Brian. Um, it's always good to hear from working parents who are in it, who are doing it, and are doing a great job at it. So hats off to both of you as great parents, as great leaders. Um, and you know, great consultants. So with that, we will see you guys on another episode of Transformation Ground Control. But until next time, thanks for joining us. Thanks, Brisa. Bye, thank you. Have a great day. Bye.